I know a lot of you share my concerns about the potential of a significant imbalance of power in the coming AGI era when all work is automated, robots and AI are capable of anything and everything, and humans live in a meaning economy, jobs and work driven by value, not a paycheck. Today, I'm directly tackling these concerns head on, how to avoid significant imbalances of power, evil and corrupt one world governments, over-reliance on a completely corrupt and fallible government system, etc. We're going to talk about something called collective ownership and the decentralization of power. Is there a way to put the coming age of abundance when AGI is here? Can we put that entire new economy into the hands of the people? I've seen a pattern where so many of you on my channel in the comments have not given up hope yet. I really appreciate that. There are so many voices and so many people out there that seem to believe history is already written. And there's only one way to go. Evil dictatorship, totalitarian control, fascist regimes, complete dystopia, you name it. If you've watched Terminator, Ready Player One, and 98.9%, .9%, in fact, just about 100% of movies that cover a fictional storyline of the age of technology present to us something awful, something where our future is out of our control. And isn't that interesting? What a way to control our thoughts about the potential of what really is an era of abundance. I mean, for the first time in history, we're looking at the potential of not having to work for a paycheck of not having to physically work to produce goods and services. I am the hardest worker I know. I will put in a 10 hour day without complaining. I will show up and get it done. But I can't wait for the day when I can be more creative, not have to rely on nearly burnt out freelancers, be able to just film, speak, my AI agents get everything done. I can do more of what I love and build more leisure time into my daily patterns. That is not a bad thing. And I think if that's our goal, we should and we can work towards it. So I'm here to tell you the future hasn't been written yet. A book I picked up that I just started reading, shout out to Dave Shapiro for this book recommendation. By the way, I'm very sad he's quitting AI, but I'm gonna take that opportunity to double and triple down. AGI is really all I care to talk about. How we work towards it, what we do as human race to prepare is near and dear to my heart. I wake up, I live, I breathe, I eat, I sleep. I think about this topic. It keeps me up at night. So Dave, enjoy your life as a fiction writer. I will take up that hat and talk about AGI all day long. All right, so back to the topic. In this book, Exponential Organizations, written by some pretty awesome people, Salem Ishmael, Peter Diamandis, Michael Malone, forwarded by Ray Kurzweil, it talks about exponential organizations that started to creep up in Silicon Valley, where instead of relying on tons and tons of people to get work done, information technologies were at the heart of the deliverables. And what they found that in these, they called them exponential organizations, organizations was an astounding 40x higher return than a traditional organization. That's right, shareholders got 40 times more their investment back from an exponential organization, one that was tapping into the powers of technology to deliver an end result. That was back in 2021. So imagine the possibilities now. I mean, I used to run a 100 person writing agency. I sold it in 2021. Now I work as the president of Branwell, an AI driven growth and marketing platform that is literally replacing an audience augmenting marketing teams. I'm on calls with our users all the time to see patterns and efficiency gains. And let me tell you, it is wild. I have seen one writer 25 X their production. That's right. One writer become 25 people because of the technology, specifically Branwell, that she was able to use. But I came across a quote in this book, Exponential Organizations, super relevant to today's topic. And I wanted to share it with you. The founders of these exponential organizations will become the leaders of the world's economy for the foreseeable future. Even governments will come to them on bended knees. We are 100% seeing that, but I don't think politicians are listening fully yet. I mean, just listen to Sam Altman's Senate hearing a year ago to see how politicians didn't take him seriously. But I do believe times will change. And as technology progresses, we're now at level two in OpenAI's five steps to AGI. We're going to keep exponentially increasing. I don't believe anything will be put in place to stop this exponential growth. We even saw this in California legislator where Gavin Newsom vetoed a bill that would have halted the progress of artificial intelligence. He stopped that legislator 
But if we think about the concentration of power going in the wrong hands, this is a very real threat. In fact, it's the underpinning danger in UBI, universal basic income, which creates such a high level of dependency and over-reliance on the government. If the government is your only source of income, that puts your economic agency at a very low point. Total reliance on the government is not healthy. I don't care how you spend it. We need economic agency as individuals. So collective ownership over private ownership definitely gets a bad rap because the main definition is this pretty terrible idea of nationalization when the government comes in and takes control of that privately owned corporation. That's not that great. What's the government going to do with a high tech company? Probably kill it. But if we think in a direction of decentralizing the power, there are some good ideas here. Inside the idea of a shift from private to collective ownership of corporations, if we toss nationalization out, which I don't think will really work, putting AI companies fully in the hands of governments, no thank you. We can look at something like social ownership, where an asset is looked at as belonging to a society as a whole. There's community ownership, state ownership, employee ownership, cooperative ownership, and even citizen ownership of equity in that technology. With the idea of decentralization, the stakeholder economy also works. I think this could pair up pretty well with social ownership. In the stakeholder economy, instead of owners and customers, you have stakeholders. And those stakeholders can come from decentralized marketplaces. Citizens could be stakeholders. There can be equal valued shares and equal votes in decision making. The idea would be to take control out of the hands of a very centralized few, which creates a lot of dangers for corruption, a lack of transparency, the potential of AGI itself in the wrong hands and instead create a more democratic and equitable system where everyone is treated fairly. Equal access for all can happen. I think that in the coming age of AI, our jobs will look totally different. I plan to talk a lot more about this in future videos. Instead of working for a paycheck, imagine working solely so that you could provide value to the economic system. And that value came from what you loved to do, what you're naturally gifted at, that you have refined as a skill. And that could be coding, that could be writing. Exploring a post-labor future is something I think we all should be doing. One of the best steps we could do to get ready for that huge paradigm shift is to find out what we love to do and get really good at it. Find a lane that we can get lost in. Find the work we could do for hours and thoroughly enjoy. I'll be talking more about true collective ownership and how we could even attach this to the blockchain. Of course, with the blockchain, there comes the thought of the need for quantum resistant cryptography, which we haven't solved for, or at least it's not out there in the open. If we solve quantum, all encryption can be de-encrypted instantly. So we've got to create quantum proof cryptography if we're going to live in a post quantum age. Finance itself, currency, how we pay for goods and services, all of this is subject to change in an era of total automation. But how do we decentralize the power that comes with that? We've got to avoid the dystopian that George Orwell talked about, that all these movies in Hollywood try to make us believe is in fact our future. But remember, that's still fiction. The future has yet to be written and we can play a role in that. What are your thoughts on how we can decentralize the power that corporations and governments might have in an era of AGI. I'd love to hear from you in the comments. Let me know. Your comment might inspire a future video. Thank you for being here with me. It is an honor to live in the technology age with you and get to explore all these rabbit holes. I'll see you down the next one.